Hey guys, Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today we are gonna to be doing a full start to finish DIY Linux web server. So let's get started. Now everything we talk about will be linked down in the description below and everything that I'm trying to do here today is a DIY full web hosting server complete with control panel. Everything for you to manage your uh, domains as well as emails and databases, basically everything to be a full web hosting provider. Especially if you wanna be able to host your own websites or host websites for your friends or family and emails and everything, this is the way to go. Now we will be doing this from scratch, basically a brand new Linux server, which was provided by Linode. And I do have a promotional code for hundred dollar credit if you wanna follow along. Uh, we're also gonna be using a software called Hastia CP or Hastia Control Panel. If I'm, I don't know if I'm saying that correctly, but I hope so. And we will also be providing the domain through onlydomains.com. Now you could use any domain, you could use GoDaddy, you could use uh, Google if you want, but I've just been using only domain. So that's what we're gonna be using today. Now this is my recent theming of my desktop. If you wanna see that video, I will leave a link on the top left. Basically it's Dracula theme. Uh, you can just probably search it on my channel. Looks really good. I really do like the purple style as well as the wallpaper that actually one of my Discord members provided because this is a really good wallpaper for this. You can actually just go to linocom slash Novaspirit and it will actually bring you to this page where you could actually get the $100 credit. Now I already logged in and this is a fresh um, login. I don't have any nodes here or anything, so I'm gonna create one from scratch. So what we're gonna do is uh, create, and I'm gonna choose, uh, you could do Debian 10, Debian 9, um, the latest version of Ubuntu. Actually, um, I will be choosing the long-term support one because that's where the software will support this. And that's what I'm gonna be doing. As far as the region goes, uh, anywhere near you, uh, I'm gonna choose Newark. And we're gonna use the cheapest one there. So it's gonna be $5 a month if I keep running this. And you can name the instance if you want. And the root password could be anything you need. And that is about it, create node. Now this doesn't take too long to create. It's actually gonna spin up a full instance. Uh, it's actually providing new IP addresses, tons of stuff. So this is what I'm gonna be doing right now. Now, you see this IP address? While I'm waiting for this to provision, we could also go and purchase a domain. Now, I already purchased this domain today, actually just now, called AI Me This. Now, I'm interested in getting into AI, and I am going to be using this domain probably for something else in the future. So I just decided to buy it now. And what you want to do is go into your only domain's name server, edit record zones, and change all these IP addresses to your server IP. So here, I will actually paste this save that and go down the list now we do need to change this this is originally should say mail i think you just have to change it over to webmail because that's what we're going to be using um it's only a subdomain that's why it's called webmail same thing with www that's like a subdomain um we're also going to change this as well and then uh, we'll leave this if this needs to be changed change this as well to webmail.aimethis.com once we're done with this we should be able to head back and you see now it's running so it's, it's really quick to get this up and going. Now, what I'm gonna do is launch the console. It should still be booting because it's, let's see, it's still booting because we just literally put this together. Now, the next step we need to do is head over to Hestia control panel or Hestia. Let me know if I'm saying that correctly because I think I pronounced it correctly. Now, there are a few steps that you can follow, which is this, and then you can run the install. Or if you wanna perform an unintended install, you could do this as well. But this is what we're gonna be doing. You don't really need to know the full back end of Linux. This is basically what you're gonna be controlling your web server on, uh, this open source Linux web server control panel. All right, let's log in. And in here, I am gonna type the password that we made before. Should be good to go. And since this is freshly installed, I should have most of the latest package. What we need to do is just use this. Since you can't copy and paste, you really need to just write it. So wget http raw github user content.com cp sdrcp slash release install hst install.sh. Okay, there you go. If I list structure, you should see that install file. And all I have to do is bash and type that in. 
and that is it. It's gonna start checking for dependencies and install stuff that it needs to install or remove stuff that is conflicting with the packages. Now this whole process of the install takes roughly about 20 minutes or so. So if you got that time, especially on this server, which I'm only using one core, it takes about 20 minutes. Now, you see I found conflicting packages, it's gonna remove it. And we know they're not using UFW because it's using IP tables, so that's why it's gonna remove it. Now this is what it does. Basically install the following components. Uh, web server, PHP, DNS, mail server, uh, MariaDB, a ton of stuff. Now I'm gonna hit yes and type in the admin email. Uh, FQDN hostname. I don't have a fully qualified domain name host right now. This is where you would put your web server hosting.com, whatever. So if you have one already, that's where you would put it in. I'm gonna hit enter, let that install, and I'm gonna let that go. Currently updating, installing packages. Again, this is the process where it takes maybe 15, 20 minutes, but don't reboot it yet. It's gonna ask you to reboot it, but don't reboot it yet. I'm gonna show you something. Okay, we are back and everything is all done. If you see, it just flashes the screen, but here's the thing. This is the password. Now, if you just rebooted the computer, you would have missed this and had to reinstall the whole thing. So remember to keep that password safe by you. Uh, what I'm gonna be using is a uh, text editor. And in here, since I think I can copy and paste it. So let's see. Yeah, there you go. I could actually copy and paste over here. Um, I am gonna leave that. And do you wanna reboot? Yes. I'm gonna reboot the server now. Minimize that for now. And give this a minute. I'm gonna have to refresh that page. I actually don't really need to go back in because I'm done. So the IP address it gave me was this, okay? And what I, the port that I gotta go to is 8083. So I'm gonna wait for that to boot up. Let's see. Did it boot yet? All right, here we go. Everything is freshly rebooted. I'm gonna go over to the IP address and type in 8083. All right, we have something that we hit. I'm gonna advance, accept the risk. Here is the control panel. So I'm gonna do admin, next, the password. Actually, that was the IP address. So I gotta grab the password from here. Log in. And the first thing you should do is actually change that password. I'm never gonna remember it, but here it is the console itself. So you have your users where you can actually have multiple people admin this device or not even, you know, give user access. This is web where you would stick all your domain names in. Right now we just have that local host that we did. Uh, DNS, mail, this is where you would actually align all your mail addresses to. Databases, so if you're creating a WordPress or something like that, you would create a database for it. Uh, cron tab, so you have jobs like task scheduler and then backups. And then on top, you have all these uh, other options where you could set your username, password. Uh, you could even upload files if you wanted to. Going into here would actually give you like a little FTP kind of thing that you could upload files to. Then you have your logs, statistics, and everything else. So if you want, the first thing I would actually do, other than change your password, say the second thing, is to change this. So it allows SSH from any IP address. I would change this to your public IP address from your machine. So this way no other people could break into the SSH. So I would definitely change that around. Uh, possibly even change this uh, 8083 to only you so nobody else could access it. So there are a couple of things that you should lock down just so uh, people can't brute force or whatever. There is a way to actually uh, change this and add two-factor authentication to this uh, login. But that's, that's something you would have to look up. Now, to get this aligned, what we need to do is since we have uh, this, uh, where is it? Oh, my user session expired. But since we have the domain already pointed to this IP address, what we need to do is add the web domain. And for us, it's called aimethis.com. And here we could actually do everything we wanna enable mail, advanced option. Also, if you wanna SS SSL, uh, enable SSL and use Let's Encrypt because Let's Encrypt is free. And have all these things. If you want an FTP account, you could add that in as well, username and password for the FTP. So there's a lot of things you could set up for this. And I would definitely set up a FTP if you're gonna upload files like WordPress and stuff. It does also warn you about creating a standard user and not to use admin. Um, I would recommend that as well, but I'm just showing you this for now. 
So now that we added the domain, I'm gonna hit back and you're gonna see that this was added. Now, if I was to go into AIMeThis.com, see, now it goes to this website called We're Working On It, which is actually hosted by our server. To double check that, I can go into Files, uh, go into Web, go into Add Me This, AI Me This, Public HTML, and you see an index page over here? I am actually gonna change this to say, please check back soon. Nova Spirit says hi. Save. And let's go back to our web hosting. So now if I do refresh, Nova Spirit says hi, you see that? That's the little thing that I changed around. And if I wanted to check HTTPS traffic, it should work. HTTPS, yeah, there you go. Uh, the search still gotta be aligned to it, but we'll figure that out later. Now, if you want to get mail, because we now have a domain, all I have to do is just add a user. So I could click on here, add mail account. It could be anything. So it'll be Don at AI me this, generate the password. So it's going to be pass, word something like that will work uh you can do advanced options and stuff like that but this is your url you see how it says webmail.aimethis.com that's what i had you change in the domains only domains so if i was to hit save everything's all set i could go to ai me this and in here i could do don at ai me this.com and the password is password there we have it our own little email. I know that this works. Uh, I could test it, but uh, I'm not gonna go drag you through that. But yeah, it does work. You could actually send it to your the temporary email address or something like that to test it out. But that is basically it. Now you have your own domain. You can manage everything through here. You could enable, disable HTTPS. Um, you could do basically whatever you want. The admin console will still be on this weird IP address that you have until you align it to a domain name but for now we now could manage other domains so if you purchase another domain from only domains anything else you could just attach it to this and now this will manage everything especially like the emails you could configure it how much space you want to give it uh the dns if you want to do subdomains and stuff like that you have databases for the web server if you wanted to create something like wordpress stuff you know you just make a username and everything else so it'll have all the things that you need to properly maintain, manage, and host web server. Well, that is it for me. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This is basically a full way of getting your web server from start to finish. And I mean, there's a little bit of details here and there that uh, you could probably do some settings to the firewall, lock it down a little bit, uh, stuff like that. But ultimately, that's it. Now, if you guys like content like this, let me know down in the comments below because there's a lot of stuff that is like a full tutorial that I would like to do like this. Like basically creating your own web server is something that I'd like to do. But yeah, let me know down in the comments below. And I do want to thank Linode for providing me the server so I could do the types of videos like this. And if you guys have any questions about this, Leave it down in the comments below. If you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing. Also hit that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is gonna be out. And I do need a new <laughs> outro in a sense, so I've been thinking about it. Anyway, if you guys have any suggestions for that, let me know down in the comments below. Thanks for watching.